This program is sponsored by the Psalm 127 Fund. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Zion's sake, I'll not hold my peace. Welcome to For Zion's For Sake. Isaiah 62.1 is taken directly out of the Hebrew Scriptures when the prophet Isaiah declared, For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not keep quiet, until her righteousness goes forth like brightness and her salvation like a torch that is burning. Your hosts for the program are Shelley and June Volk, Jewish believers burdened to see Jew and Gentile become one. Believers strengthened in their faith and for their Jewish kinsmen to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God. Good evening to you. Bless the Lord and welcome to For Zion's Sake. We thank you for joining us. We're the Volks. My name is Shelley. And my name is June. Hi, everyone. It's a privilege to be with you as we continue a theme that we started on Monday evening. And if you were not with us, we encourage you to listen to the previous programs because the subject this week is godly suffering. We'd like to review quickly the verses we shared, and we're going to go on from that point this this evening. Hebrews 5.8, Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. 2 Timothy 3, verse 12, All that will live godly lives in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Jesus himself said in John 15, verse 20, If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. We read from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12. When we are reviled, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure. Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. For unto you, we're speaking about you and, and Junie and I. For unto us, it has been granted for Christ's sake not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. In the Sermon on the Mount, we read uh, chapter 5, verses 10, 11, and 12. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men cast insults at you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward in heaven is great, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. We read in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, It is through much tribulation that we enter the kingdom of God. Again, we point it out on every program, and we point out now. We must view suffering, or trials, or difficulties, or afflictions from the eternal perspective and not just from the transient earthly view. We then spoke from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, which really explains this, because Paul said that he suffered momentary light afflictions. In our understanding, they'd be major disasters, but he looked upon them as momentary light afflictions that produced in him an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. We read in a similar manner, James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Every test that we go through has God's intention to strengthen us in him. It's going to produce endurance. And when we go through these afflictions, we will have produced in us an eternal weight of glory. Junie, it's really so encouraging if we could have that mindset to embrace these things from God. We pointed out uh, in the book of Hebrews, writing about um, Moses, it says, he chose to suffer the affliction of being with God's people rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And I think, Junie, you said on a previous program, so much of people who belong to the church who are so-called believers are still enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. For those of you who are listening and are not believers, 
I say forgive the church because we haven't lived according to every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But Jesus is building his end time church. And it begins with you and me, Shelley. <laughs> yes, Judy. And it begins with every listener. Not that we shouldn't, uh, what, be blessed with enjoying our children, of course. our grandchildren, or um, going visiting, or especially in this day when quarantine is the name of the game in so many states, even Arizona that was shut down and might be shut down again because the virus is increasing. Can we be thankful to the Lord and can we be thankful that we know him and we're even living in this generation because he appointed Thank certain you, ones to live in the last days? Well, let's continue on, Junie. There's a tremendous verse in chapter 2 of Timothy. And um, hold on, let me get it. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. If we suffer or endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. We read also in Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels and will recompense every man according to his deeds. So Jesus is connecting his suffering on the cross with the glory of his return when, when he comes with his angels and he'll reward every man according to his deeds. And he comes in the glory of his Father. And Jesus taught, I and the Father all one. Yes. And we say the Shema every Friday to identify with our people that the Lord, our God, is one Lord. And so we see the deity of the Messiah. Powerful, Junie. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to First Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read the first five verses. First Peter chapter 1, 1 to 5. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who reside as aliens, scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus and be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in fullest measure." Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith by a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Junie, these are such encouraging verses that, you know, how can you do anything but rejoice? Okay, but then we go on to verse 6. Listen to these words. In this you rejoice greatly, even though for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. In other words, God's painting the full picture here, and we need to see the full picture. Even now, for a little while, you may be distressed by trials and suffer temptations. In the King James Version, it says, Now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. And in uh, the Amplified Version, Now for a little while, you may be distressed by trials and suffer temptations. God is painting through the Word, through Peter's writing, such a true picture of the Gospel. You have to rejoice but we're showing that even in that rejoicing, there are going to be trials to perfect us, to be that man and woman that God is shaping and forming day by day. So it says for a little while or for a season, it's going to be for a short time compared to eternity. It is a short time. But we re remembered, we uh, need to recall what we read in Second Corinthians 4, 
that every affliction, every tribulation now, not the ultimate tribulation before the Lord's return, they are all momentary light afflictions. But what is the purpose of the suffering? What is the purpose of the tribulation? What is the purpose for all the difficulties that we experience? We see what is it. the purpose? What is the purpose? I'm glad you asked that question, Joan, because I'm going to read verse 7 in First Peter 1. That the proof of your faith be more precious than gold, which is perishable, perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor. You know what, Junie, this is so encouraging. Why are we going through pressures? Why are we going through trials? Why are we going through difficult times? It's all to perfect us, to make us purer than pure gold through these tribulations, through the suffering, through the afflictions, through the, trial, through the uh, trials, through the chastenings of the Lord. And what comes to my mind, Shelley, is choices. Do we choose to follow the Lord no matter what the cost? Do we choose to be one with him? Yes, Lord. No matter what the cost. And when we think of that, we think of temporal costs. We forget the eternal glory and reward that waits us as God transforms us into his image and his likeness, and he is pure, he is holy, he is more precious than gold, Shelley. Really? So we need to get this so ingrained in us, Junie, that there is purpose in suffering, there is purpose in affliction, there is purpose in God chastening us as a father would chasten his son, there is purpose in the trials that he puts us through. Remember, we serve a God who's sovereign, a God who's supreme, who has our best interest at heart. And suffering is part of the of what God wants to do and use in us that we might become those men and women that God could trust in these end days. That reminds me of a Jewish guy that got saved years ago. And he had stolen a jacket. He was so convicted, he brought it back, willing to pay the price, and the man forgave him. Wow, wow, wow. Lord, let us all be honest and choose you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And righteousness and truth. And really see, Lord, how you meet us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord, to be those end-time people that you will use as witnesses when great trouble comes to this earth. Let this be a prelude to it, Lord, and strengthen your people. And a sign would be that we can endure the, the pressures, the temptations, the trials that come our way, that we will be enriched with your fullness. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you would like to get in touch with Shelley and June, you can write to them at P.O. Box 1784, Scottsdale, Arizona, 85252. That's P.O. Box 1784, Scottsdale, Arizona, 85252. And you can also contact them on their website, ShelleyAndJuneVolk.com. That's ShelleyAndJuneVolk.com. Until next time, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. This program was sponsored by the Psalm 127 Fund.